Hello traders, today I want to take a look at McDonald's. Um, I think we have a good technical setup, a good some good fundamentals behind it, and um, we can add some risk on the bearish side on this trade, and I want to do a ratio spread at the end. I'm going to go over the trade structure for that later. Just starting off with this, um, before I get into technicals, I want to go over some fundamentals for this right here, and um, later we're going to go over what the Fed's doing, because people are ignoring valuations in this market because they think that um, the Fed is taking their side. So I want to talk about that too. And then we'll get into the technicals and then uh, finally we'll do trade structure. So from valuation perspective, you look at this thing and these earnings right here, now you can say, okay, the earnings are lower because of coronavirus, but if you actually go back, you look on an annualized basis, you look at these earnings on an annualized basis, they're only about $8.00. Um, eight dollars annualized, and so annualized eight dollars. You got a PE of twenty three for this thing. Now, when we're traders, we're looking for good pot odds. We're looking for low risk, high reward, high probability. So we're in a situation right here where it's trading for twenty three times earnings. So twenty three times earnings means you're making about four percent a year, and Normally, stocks should be valued at somewhere around 8% a year. So 4% is already overvalued, and that's taking into account 2019 earnings before anything in 2020 happened. So that's presuming that this thing goes all the way back with a V-shaped recovery, um, no coronavirus, no riots, none of that, goes back to 2019, you're going to make 4% a year, still overvalued. What if we presume some future growth, that's still only 5 to 6% a year? Um, based off the growth that has had over the last couple of years. Even with that, um, afterwards, we're still only going to get a return of 7% a year. If we presume aggressive growth, that's when you could get a return of 8 to 9% a year and a V-shaped recovery with no second wave of COVID. With all those presumptions, at best, McDonald's is fully valued. At worst, though, it is overvalued 4x, but at best, it is um, fully valued. And so we have one of those good pot odds opportunities where there just isn't much upside because all the upside is already priced in, and all, all it is is just downside from here on out. And um, one of the things that many people are saying right now is, well, you don't want to fight the Fed. Um, Congress has you backed because of fiscal policy. Well, I wanted to take a look at that, actually. So... I don't think we can say that the Fed has our back anymore because back in March, if we look at this balance sheet, the balance sheet went from basically every week the balance sheet would grow by $400 billion. We look at the balance sheet though over the past week and it's completely plateaued. The balance sheet is growing at a rate of around $3 billion now instead of $400 billion. And so the Fed does not have her back anymore. The balance sheet is not growing the way it used to. Um, from a fiscal policy perspective, there likely won't be more stimulus in the short term. Um, no more stimulus checks. No more um, 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 unemployment benefits that are going to be extended. None of that's going to happen. So from a fiscal policy perspective, the, um, Congress doesn't have your back. From a monetary perspective, the Fed doesn't have your back because the Federal Reserve's balance sheet is starting to plateau from, the, from um, a fiscal perspective, no more fiscal spending, and it's overvalued. So you have a setup where the company's overvalued, and on top of that, everybody believes that the Fed has their back, but in all reality, the Fed does not have their back, and Congress does not have their back with more fiscal stimulus. So what are the technicals looking like over here? We have what we like to call a island top. I think we got a confirmation on it. So right here, normally what tends to happen with an island top is that you have a gap up, big time capitulation, and capitulation to the upside usually doesn't happen. Usually you see complacency to the upside with very low volatility. This was an example where it rocketed higher, and the rest of the market did this more aggressively than McDonald's, but it rocketed higher, and then there was upside capitulation, and then it essentially blow off top, and then it gapped down. So gap up, blow off top, max capitulation by the longs, gap down later on, and then you're in a situation where you try to fill a gap, you come down, 
and then right here you try to fill the gap come up here but then you gap down here um, and then from here after gap down you do come up and then you gap up you try to fill this gap but then you have this right here you can't fill it next you try to fill it and then finally starts to fall this is what we call the island top formation you can see it's an island there's a gap right here there's a gap right here and this gap cannot be filled um, right here we got about a third of a fill usually you should get a full fill though um, not a partial fill and so the technicals are confirming the fundamentals the fact that it's overvalued the fact that um, over the last two weeks the reason we saw this happen was because of obviously positioning is one thing but another thing also is because of what's going on with monetary fiscal policy and that it's not um, as strong as people thought it was and so you still have that downside risk I don't see much upside um, potential though for this and that island top formation is certainly something that is giving us a good bearish entry where it just does not fill this gap right here and so it's looking very bearish based off of that so what's a good trade structure to take advantage of this because here's the thing we don't know whether this thing is just going to drop to lower lows or whether it's just going to continue like this sideways and then after that drop to lower lows so what we could do is that we could just straight up um, buy some puts and bet on this sort of downside right here problem with that is that if it just chops sideways so even though it didn't go up it could just chop sideways and we, we would be losing money to theta um, another thing is we could sell some call spreads that would make money in both of these but it would limit our upside so what I'm looking to do is I want to do a ratio spread so with our ratio spreads we know that ratio spreads are a one by two so what you're doing in a ratio spread is essentially that you sell one and then you buy two um, so I might sell one put right here so minus one and then plus two and what this creates it creates a payoff diagram that looks like this and I'll show you guys on the side the payoff diagram um, for a callback spread I'll go over put afterwards a callback spread looks like this and so this is what it looks like for a callback spread essentially you just need the stock to not stay in the middle you either need to go up a lot or needs to go down a lot but not stay in the middle we can do a separate trade structure on the put side like this here's what we're gonna do on the put side we're gonna do the same trade structure but now if it goes up don't lose money don't make money at break even and then we have this and if it goes down we make money all the way to zero but what we can do is that instead of having the stock price right here in the middle what we're gonna do instead is that we're gonna structure it in such a way where we have the current stock price about right here so if we can structure it where all that has to happen is that even if the price stays the same we're profitable the prices should not go up and fill in this area right here where we start to become unprofitable then that would be a successful ratio spread so what are we gonna do then we have the strikes right here short strike 210 put and the long strike is gonna be 197 and a half put um this is gonna be a back spread so you're buying the ratio spread if you're buying the ratio spread we call it the back spread that means that you're going long two and the reason we call the ratio spread is the one by two um, that's the most common type you can do if you want to be really aggressive do one by fours one by fives you can go as far as you want with it but this is essentially what it is right here and we're going to be buying two of these and then we're going to be selling one of these so what's that going to look like on the chart we will sell a 210 so basically if the price goes above 210 as I said the difference is if I just buy a put um, and the price goes completely against me the prices go up I lose money if I buy this put spread or um, put ratio spread and I do it correctly 
um, then if the price was completely against me, then I don't lose money. So I'm actually going to put a check mark right there. Um, 210 is that spot right there. And then along the 197 and a half puts quantity two. So 197 and a half right here. So basically what we need is that we need the price to stay below here where we would make money if the price went down or if the price just traded sideways like this below this strike then we also make money and that's why I put a check mark right there if it goes above we don't make money but we don't lose money we are at break even that's why I put a check mark basically right here is a zone where you don't want the price to go so as long as the price does not go into this zone as long as it goes up a lot or the price stays the same or goes down a lot we are profitable and so that's how I want to structure this because I don't see from what we've been seeing with the island top formation where again and again it tries to go up but it doesn't go up and it fails to fill the gap I think that we will either continue trading sideways or go down and this gives us a way where we can participate on the downside um, but at the same time we can protect our upside um, and also have positive theta on top of that or at least have this would be neutral theta right here but if we bought a put we would be negative theta um, if we sold the call spread then we'd put ourselves in a position where we were short volatility. Um, this right here is vol neutral and is theta neutral. And so you'd be short volatility. And on top of that, uh, it would also put you in a position where you're limiting the max profit that you can make to the premium that you receive. Right here, though, we're letting our profits run. At the same time, though, we're putting ourselves in a situation where it just doesn't need to come over here. And I don't think it will because this gap is not getting filled. It rejected multiple times um, four days were rejected and also intraday multiple times within those four days so if you guys have any questions about uh, this trade uh, technical analysis fundamental analysis either valuation part of it or um, what's going on with the Fed just go ahead and ask us or if you have a question about um, how ratio spreads work or the back spread uh, the back ratio spread we just did right here just go ahead and um, ask us. Other than that, um, thank you for watching. We will have more videos coming out. Um, not necessarily a trade idea video, but we will have a video tomorrow. I actually have a video on active versus passive investing tomorrow, or active trading, actually, I should say, versus passive investing tomorrow coming out. And um, I will also be releasing um, four economic indicators to be looking at um, tomorrow, too. So stay tuned for those. Other than that, thank you for watching and happy trading.